Okay, so we are illustrated um, with our first problem. So, at the very beginning, what actually I want to tell you is, um, just look at these energy equations. You are familiar with this energy equation, and you know the every terms here. So here, actually, um, if you look at this right rectangular box, um, you can see this is you know the major head loss and the minor losses today we are going to use the head loss actually we are going to solve a couple of problems for the first problem we need to consider the head loss so head loss it could be two types like the major head loss and the minor head loss the major head loss it is actually due to the frictional resistance of the bipole so and the expression is f l over d v square over 2 g so f you know this is the friction factor and this head loss we said this is the major loss and the minor loss it could be due to different um, causes like the openings the bends of the pipe the joints bulbs sudden expansion constriction etc so the head loss due to all of this, any of this, like the bands, bulbs, or openings, or whatever it is, you see all of this, we will define this as a minor loss. And this is actually, you know, KLP squares over 2G. This scale, this is called the loss coefficients. So, if you um, look at the slides that I uploaded, uh, then you will see um some some informations regarding the you know the head losses you can see this is the loss coefficients for different um objects you see some other like if you have a smooth 90 degree bend pipe or if you see if the the major bend sometimes if it if it is on a written bend so for valves so you will get all the you know, the loss coefficients from here so just check the slide that i uploaded i send it to you so you will get the loss coefficient from there so now i will start um, with the first problem okay so the first problem is in the pumping system um you can see the pumping system here water is pumped from this reservoir you can see this reservoir this is um you can say the water tank um this is the pre-surface and this elevation we say this is haze and this haze it is given five meter look here this is given five meter so water is pumped from this reservoir and it is discharged into the atmosphere so this is the inlet pipe from the reservoir this is the pump right so this is the pump and this is the inlet pipe this is the discharge pipe and now the thing is um if you read the question the water is pumped from the reservoir and discharged into atmosphere so we know the the length of the pipe the inlet pipe it is 1000 meter and the diameter is given so this is for the inlet pipe for the discharge pipe this is just half of the inlet pipe you see 500 meter and the diameter is it's different so you can see from this figure the diameter is also different both pipe um, are of clean cast iron that's the material so for the clay cast iron um, okay so I'll, I'll, I'll discuss later so we know this elevation is 5 mid and we need to find the water flow rate and the pump power so the water flow rate and the inlet and the pump power when the cavitation is about to begin if you attended the third session uh, I discussed what is cavitation especially due to the pressure variations um, you know cavitation happen so if you if you see my slide i already discussed during the class um so you see here so say we have you have a just a closed tank it's like filled half filled with water it is closed surface and um yeah so okay so there's 
So let me discuss the vapor pressure at first. So if you put some external heat here, it will, you know, water, um, this is at atmospheric pressure. So water is that, uh, water is that to become, you know, the vapor at 100 degrees centigrade. So at 100 degrees centigrade, it will create some vapor here. And this vapor, it will exert some pressure. This is called the vapor pressure. So then in simple order, we can say the vapor pressure is the pressure which is exerted by the um, vapor on the fluid. And now the cavitation. Cavitation is, say, this is the pipe. Uh, we have the thickness. So we have the high pressure in this section. We have the low pressure in this section. So in the low pressure zone, the air bubble creates. So in other words, we can say the cavitation is the air bubble creations. And this air bubbles, you know, it cloves at the high pressure zone. And to clove this, you need very high pressure. And this pressure, it, you know, creates some um, corrosion on the on the pipe. So it creates very small, small holes. So that's you know, we need to actually simply, um, we need to avoid these cavitations. So that's the challenge. The so cavitation and the vapor pressure i if you attended the second or third cures i discussed detail like what is cavitation and what is vapor pressure but i need to stop here otherwise you know the video will be lengthy so maybe i'll go back to the problem we need to calculate the pump power when the cavitation is about to begin that means you know before cavitation so we will calculate the power when cavitation is just going to begin and the water is at 20 degrees centigrade temperature so let's start with the solution another thing is um the system is at sea level and it said make reasonable um assumptions so we already discussed uh, this system um this is the overall system we said um this is 1000 meter and the diameter is 1000 meter the diameter is 0.22 this is 500 meter and the diameter is 0.18 um initially we said um, this is the free surface so you know the gas pressure it should be zero and if we consider the absolute pressure it is 101300 so what we're doing we just define different names so let's say this this free surface of the reservoir let's say this is o and let's say the pump at this section put some name this is i and the exit this is e so we give this three name O, I, and E. So this is the pump. Okay, so this is the pump here. So the pressure, uh, this free surface, it could be the absolute pressure or the gas pressure. It depends. And the pressure at this um, pump section, that means the pump inlet, you know, the cavitation happen here. So it should be the vapor pressure. And this is constant two, three, four, zero, four. So this is constant the vapor pressure, right? And we know um, the first question is we need to calculate the water flow rate, right? So if we want to calculate the water flow rate, you know what is uh, flow rate? It is actually the area and the velocity, right? So we will calculate the flow rate um, at this pump section. That means at I. So now the question is. The area calculation, this is very simple. You can easily calculate the area. If you know the dimensions, then you can calculate. But you don't know the velocity of the pumping light. So at this pumping light, you don't know the velocity. That means you need this VI. That means the velocity. So area, it is, you know, you know the dimensions. So you can simply calculate. And it is pi. So... You know how to calculate the area so now we need to calculate the velocity so let's have a look how we can calculate the velocity of the pump um, in light so if I use the energy equation so you see um, we actually need to calculate the velocity at this section so we know this is the free surface of the reservoir and this is the pump so this is section O this is section I, if we um, use the energy equations from O to I, then we can write something like that. You know the energy equations. So this is uh, for section O, it is P naught rho Z, 
v naught square 2 g and z naught and for i it is pi rho g pi square 2 g z i and you see this is the pre surface um we need to consider the loss and for the pipe up to this section um we have the pipe so we, we can consider the major loss this is the friction loss we have a band but it says make reasonable assumption so we said our assumption is the friction loss this is you know significantly higher than the you know the the loss due to the band so we're not considering the minor loss we are considering only the major loss this is you see the f on if you can say um this is for the pipe you can say f i but i say f on l on d on v i squared 2 z that's the formula i showed you um initially at the very beginning so now um is the pressure it's what is the pressure for section o um some important discussion now uh, we said the pressure it could be the gas pressure or the absolute if it is the absolute if you consider the absolute pressure it should be one one three zero zero should we consider this gas pressure zero here this is the open surface here um you are considering the energy equations from o to i so we got very small pressure for this section this is the vapor pressure it is two three four o so two three four o pascal so this is very small pressure so as we got very small pressure here so we should not consider the gas pressure here we should consider the absolute pressure here but if we consider if we use the energy equations from zero to e then we will use the gas pressure because this is the both are the open surface and no pressure here as well so we can consider the gas pressure but when you will consider zero to i then you should consider the absolute pressure so that means the pressure it is not zero but the velocity definitely zero this is the water water is at rest here so the velocity it should be zero here so we say this term is zero and we are considering no elevations so this is p naught rho g this is p i rho g we got this is two three four zero this is one oh one three zero zero we know the density and the gravity we don't know vi this is we are going to calculate z i z one this is you know the elevation from this free surface to this pump height so this is five um this is five and now the f on l on d on v on bi squared 2g so if we simplify this then we will get this um expressions like vi square it is equal one plus four pi four five a upon and 99.9 so now the thing is this is one equation so with two unknowns we don't and uh, you see the unknown is vi the velocity at the pump inlet and the, the friction factor a one so we need to calculate the friction factor now you know how to calculate the friction factor for the materials we have i said initially this is the clean cast iron you see the cast iron so for cast iron you know the roughness height this is 0.26 meter this is constant you just check the tutorial slide um so if you check my mail email i send you the tutorial slides and you will get all the properties all the tables there so for the cast iron this is constant 0.26 and we are calculating the velocity the friction for you know for the inlet pipe that means this section so for this section the, the length is on thousands and diameter is 0 0.220 meter so um it is um i, I believe it is in millimeter so 0 0.26 millimeter and then the diameter it should be 220 millimeter so if we simplify this then we'll get the you know the relative roughness is 0 0.012 and you know how to calculate the friction factor so yeah you know the modi chart so you need to use the modi chart to calculate the friction factor but if you want to use the modi chart um just have a quick look here um we got the modi chart here you see this is um the x-axis is the reynolds number and the y-axis is you know the epsilon over d so we already calculated this so we need the reynolds number 
So that means now we need to calculate the Reynolds number. And you know Reynolds number is the velocity, diameter, and you know the kinematic viscosity. So now the issue is this is very you know complicated situation. So we are looking for the velocity. We need to calculate the velocity. And to get the velocity we need F1. But for Reynolds number calculation is you also need the velocity. So then now the issue is we will assume some friction factor for this relation. So and based on the assumption we will calculate the velocity. And then by using that velocity we will calculate the Reynolds number and then we will calculate the friction factor again. So now the question is, you see, I assume it is point zero two. Now the question is, how you will decide, like it should be point zero two. If you assume it is point zero one, then what will happen? So I can show you some technique here. Um, you see, our relative roughness is point zero zero one two. So if you look at this um, modi chart here, so this is point zero zero. Um, so that means our friction factor is it could be like here this red line so what we will do we got the values 0 0.0012 so let's say this 0 0.001 if we come this way or let me just move this on here so you see the friction factor it could be 0 0.02 something so definitely it's not 0 0.02 so we're assuming this one so that's very close number in that way we just we need to follow this line so we took very you know close value of that one so that way um, we, we assume this is 0 0.02 and then we put this f on here and we got the velocity is 1.043 and by using this value we calculated the Reynolds number it is 0.23 and 10 to the power 5 otherwise we have no way to calculate the Reynolds number so we got the Reynolds number here and once we got this Reynolds number, then we will um, go back to the Modi chart. So now, um, from Modi chart, um, you know, for for Reynolds number this, you see, we just calculated it for Reynolds number this, and this relative roughness 0 0.0012, we got the friction factor is this. So this is, you know, we got based on our assumptions this value. And I got this friction factor this and now we use this friction factor again here in these equations and if we put it here then we got the velocity is 0.1 meter per second so what we found the velocity difference is it's very close it is 0 0.1 0 0.043 it is exactly one so that means we can say that this is very close that you know the difference is not that much so we can stick with this fellow that okay our assumption is okay so we got the you know the inlaid velocity is one so now um we need we can calculate simply the flow rate it is area into velocity so the area is pi over 4 d squared so this is the area and this is the velocity so if we simplify this then we'll get this is the velocity the flow rate so that means we have done with the past part of this section this is quite you know annoying problem because um you need to do a lot of things um if you get this question in the final exam or these types of question yeah you need to just try to solve you know don't be rush yeah be, try to be cool and yeah oh, hopefully it should be okay so now the pump or and the procedure is straightforward but the calculation it's really annoying Anyways, the pump power when the cavitation is about to begin at the pump inlet. So now we will calculate the pump power. Okay, so for pump power, we are going to calculate the pump power. We know the power. The formula is it is rho, g, q, and you know the pump head. So this is actually the formula to calculate the power. So this is we say the density rho. So this is the formula we need uh, if we want to calculate the power we need the density so we know this water density under the gravity we just calculated the flow rate so what do we need to calculate we need to calculate the pump head so how we can get this pump head so look at the question here guys um pump power when the cavitation is tight 
So to calculate the pump power, what I said, we need the pump height. So now, if we uh, use the you know the energy equation again um, into you know zero to e, that means the the reservoir pre-surface and the, you know the the exit. So now if we implement the energy equation here, so you see it should be p naught square rho g per section of b naught square two g z naught and the pump height equal p rho g b e square two g z d and then you see um, the friction loss for the inlet pipe and the friction loss for the discharge pipe. We are not considering any minor losses here because our assumption is the major loss that means the frictional loss it is significantly higher than the loss due to the bend and the others so if you can remember i told you at the very beginning that when you will consider the energy equations from j to e you should consider this is the gas pressure because this is the open surface for both pumps so that means this pressure zero this pressure zero velocity definitely zero the elevation for the um, you know the reservoir this is zero <coughs> and we already know so we need to calculate this the pump head we know friction factor for the inlet pipe f1 we just calculated so we know this what we don't know is we don't know the velocity ve and we don't know the friction factor for the discharge pipe so i got an idea if you can remember the conservation of mass principle you know the continuity equation is the mass flow rate it doesn't matter so you see here we have two pipe with different diameters so according to the conservation principle or the equation of continuity the mass flow at this pipe will be equal to the mass flow here so if we calculate the you know the flow rate q you know flow rate q we call for the inlet pipe is pi by 4 d on a square v1 and for the discharge pipe this is the diameter d2 square and v e so we can just eliminate these two terms and then it will be di square vi d2 square v if we simplify this then we'll get v equal this and we already know vi di and d2 so we'll simply get v to the velocity so we got the ve the velocity for the you know the exit and now we need to calculate the friction factor again you know you need to use the modi chart so so now what is said we need to calculate the friction factor again so this the, again and again we need to do these things so we need the um, you know the relative roughness for the discharge five so for the cast iron this is constant the wall roughness and the diameter of the you know the second that means the discharge five is 180 it is point 180 meters so it should be 180 millimeter so you got this value and now let's calculate the Reynolds number so you know the velocity for the discharge section that means the exit section this so you don't need to you know assume the friction factor again because this is easy because you know the velocity you know the diameter and this is constant the kinematic viscosity so um, we got the Reynolds number is 2.17 to the power 5. So from Moody chat we got F2 equal 0 0.022. So we know F2, we know F1, we know BE. So if we substitute everything here, then we will get the, the pump head. So now just put every value here, then it will get the pump head. So um, here now the, the pump head it is equal, you know, the expression just substitute every value for b e um a upon this is the elevation a to l to d to so just substitute every value here then we'll get the head pump is 17 meter and now if we put um this formula like power equal rho g q h pump then this is the pump power so what we did here is um we know this formula is simple but the issue was the friction factor a1 and f2 this is we spend a lot of time to calculate these two friction factor otherwise we know these energy equations 
and it, yeah so it is it is time consuming a little bit but um i believe you got some understanding like how to solve these types of problem i actually want to recall um one more thing so i already discussed this so this is i said when for every problem when you will solve any problem for the chapter um if you calculate if you use the energy equations for like this pump to any other surface you should consider the absolute pressure but if you consider two free surface just consider the gas pressure that's it